I'd like to welcome everyone to our second seminar of our 2017 convention. You picked a real good week or year to come to the convention because we've had, this is going to be our second really, really good seminar. I'm starting to sound like Trump, man. <laughs> this, is gonna, this is going to be our second really, really good seminar that we've had. Yeah, but, but you actually we'll deliver. Yeah, we'll see. It's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> not what my wife said. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, we're real lucky we've got uh, Charles and Al are going to present Preserving Gaming History and the Chip Guide, and this is a good one to attend. Now, just for your information, if you want to do a seminar in 2018, there's only two spots left. So, what do you think of that? Huh? Right, you're going to There's only two spots left for next year, so if you think there's something, and I'm just being real serious, but any of you guys could do one. I know you've all got an area that you love in collecting or part of the gambling business or something. And everybody out there probably is an expert in some area. So if you want to get up here and do a seminar, it lasts anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. If you make mistakes, if you're not a good public speaker, we don't care. Just come up here and share your knowledge. That's all we ask of you. So uh, if there's somebody that does want to do it, see me after the thing and I'll give you one of the two spots that's left. <laughs> so let's let Charles Al get started. Thanks for coming. We really appreciate that. Did you warn him about the hecklers in the back? Yeah. I did. <laughs> so, welcome. Glad you all came today. Um, we're going to rehash some of the stuff you may have seen before about the history of the chip guide and show you some new things you haven't seen before. But we're going to finish up with, I hope I leave enough time to show you how you could use the chip guide to research. Sometimes you get a chip and you don't know where it's from, and it's not always easy to figure that out. So I'll give you some hints to help you get <coughs> figure that out. Okay, next. Okay, so um, let's go into the next one. You already tell them what you're gonna see. So where did we start? This is where we started. Um, the chip guide was started by Greg Susan. It started out as a printed catalog that he printed out on demand. If you ordered a catalog from him, he went to his printer and printed it out, and he got always a current version of it, and he mailed it to you. Eventually, that became uh, the chip guide, a website. And that was late 1990s or so. And uh, Greg kept that up uh, for quite a while. He enhanced it beyond riverboats to Indian casinos, Maryland casinos, Nevada dollar chips, um, maybe some uh, cruise ships. So that's what he did. And next one. But before we get to the rest of the history, I always like to keep my audience engaged. And we're going to have a quiz. So the first quiz is, what states have riverboat casinos? Well, you said... That's not a state. Louisiana. Louisiana. Iowa. All right. Louisiana is one. Missouri. Missouri is another one. Mississippi. What? Florida is not one. Mississippi. They have cruises. They don't have riverboats. New Jersey. New Jersey is not one. Like <laughs> they, they had a showboat casino, but that was a land base. So I'm talking about real riverboats. Wow. Wow. Mississippi? Oh, Mississippi. New York. Illinois. 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 I got it for you. Did we say Illinois already? Yes, Missouri. Illinois is back here. South Carolina. Ohio. 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 Ohio's not a riverboat. Uh, there's one more. I think I gave about five. Indiana. Yep. Indiana. Who said it? Okay. Did somebody say Iowa? Washington. Yeah. Who said Iowa? I, I remember their their docks now. Okay, so <laughs> go to the next page. Oh, so these six states, and that's what the original chip guide started with. Okay, and there'll be another quiz, so stay away. All right, let's go. So after Greg passed, um, the family donated. Carol donated the contents of the chip guide to the club. And I was the webmaster at that time. 
and they said, can you bring this over here? And I looked at it and I said, sure, we could do that, um, but I think we could make some improvements as well. And Greg did a terrific job, but the way he developed his website, every casino was a page, like a page in the book. So he wrote that there were a thousand casinos, a thousand pages of information. And if he wanted to make a change to the way it looked, he had to do it a thousand times. That's not the way computer guys like I do things. What we do is we make a form, and we put all the data into a database. And when you say, I want to see this casino, we access all the information about the casino, plug it into the form. So there's only one form. So if I want to make a change to all 15,000 casinos, I just do it once. And it also gives us some other power. And we'll see some of that a little bit later, some of the other things. Like Greg didn't recognize his contributors the way we do. We have a contributor page, and you can see what everybody contributed. And that's because it's in the database. So after that, um, we said, how are we going to keep this thing going? Greg did a great job, but we want to add more. So uh, we have another website that you don't see that our team of administrators use to add new content and to update existing content. And there are 15 or so of these guys, 18. About half of them are uh, active daily. And others are guys who process your requests. I see we have a couple of them in the audience. Riverboat Rick is over there. We've got Bill over there. Uh, admins, if you're in the room, uh, please stand up. These are the guys that you need to thank. These are the guys who do the work for you. And it's not really work because they enjoy it. We all enjoy doing what we do. So, and then we expanded it to all types of collectibles, not chips. And if you want to know, I get this question all the time, there are three categories that we have for stuff on the chip guy. The first is stuff to use as money in the casino. Chips, tokens, plaques, jetons, ticket in, ticket out. All those things are used as money. We use, have that. Gaming equipment, dice, uh, playing cards, things like that. And the final thing is anything else from a casino that has a casino name or logo on it. So matchbooks ashtrays, any kind of stuff you would find in the gift shop, you know? So those are the things that people collect, and that's what we have in the chip bag. And then we expanded it to not just the United States, but worldwide. So now we have casinos from all over the world in the chip bag. And we keep on tinkering with it. Why do you think we tinker with it? To make it better. It's because you guys asked us for things that we didn't think about. <laughs> That's why. All of our great ideas come from you. Somebody says, can you do this? And a lot of times the answer is yes. And it doesn't take much effort. So if it's something you'd like to see in the chip guide that it doesn't currently do, let us know. Sometimes it's a big deal. Sometimes it's five minutes worth of work, and it gets done. All right. And here's our list of administrators. Uh, Sharon is here but she's waiting for somebody at the airport whose flight was delayed. So hopefully she'll make it by the end. And here are the rest of our administrators. Some of them have tables, like John Kalman, so he's not here. Can I scroll up on this or no? Uh, no, just hit next. And here's the remaining. So these, and then that's the areas that they handle. Okay, next. So, just a little while ago, we added our 180th thousandth item to the chip guide. And some of us may have thought that, well, you know, the well is going to run dry at certain point. I'd say we could go five times that number easily. If just everybody who was a collector looked at their collections, saw what they had, what's not in the chip guide, and took a little effort to take an image of it and send it to us. So, and we'll be able to handle it. So whatever you got, hit us with it. 
and we'll get it going. We also received our 50,000 submission. So we have a submission table. It's a rolling table. As things come in, they get added on. As they get completed, they roll off, and so on. We usually have about 50 to 100 submissions waiting to be processed at any time. Um, so we did 50,000. And the other thing we're doing is, as we improve things, we add new things, we're getting new types of information we didn't have before. So we have a lot of work to go back for the 180,000 that we didn't capture that type of information and fix it up. So we've got one guy who just joined, Ron Kluhl. He says, all I want to do is go and look at each casino and fix the information that's there and make sure it's right. So, OK. What is new, I'll show you two new things today, uh, is the gaming archive. We came to realize that we were putting stuff in the chip guide that wasn't necessarily collectibles, but people were interested in knowing about. Things like Janice O'Neill's uh, casino reports, pictures, newspaper articles. Those aren't really collectibles, but we want to know about them. So I created something called the Gaming Archive. And we moved about 5,000 existing items out of the chip guide into the archive because they weren't collectible items. And we're still working on the archive. That was the beginning. And let me just show you what it's about. Okay. So I'm going to switch seats with Albert. Take it out of here. <laughs> <laughs> So I first have to let you know we are not live. We don't have an internet connection here. So I have a copy of the chip guide on my laptop, and it doesn't always work perfectly the way the one, the live one was. So if we hit a difficult. Uh, so let's go to Nevada. Everybody loves Nevada. Let's go to Jay Sands' favorite casino. <laughs> and you'll notice this red button over here. See it? It says archive. If we've got stuff in the archive, you'll see that red button. And if you click on the red button, this is the stuff we have in the archive for the Sands Casino. And you'll notice there's a type over here. Lots of them are pictures. Here's Janice O'Neill's casino report from the Sands, because we moved it over here. And we can even have videos. So there's a YouTube video on the Sands enclosure. If you click on it, we're not going to get it because we don't have an internet connection. But right from the chip guide, oh, wait a second. How did that happen? We have to, let's see what happens. We get it? I'm not even sure why this is happening. Paper article mentions raids of three casinos. We could put the article up once and attach it to each of the three illegal casinos. 
And if the newspaper article is 14 pages long, it's no problem adding each page of the article there. So it's been designed to allow it to attach to multiple uh, casinos, and it's not just going to be casinos. Let's say it mentions some of the casino operators in the article. We're going to be adding people, owners of casinos and people involved with casinos as well. So you'll be able to attach it to the people involved in the article, the casinos involved, and have as many types of attachments as you want to. Okay, so that's what, the, now, when you guys start using it, you'll start saying, hey, can I also see this? And that will drive us to improve it and uh, make it a better facility, okay? And where does the archive content come from in the future? Oh, it comes, of course, from our historians. The members. Well, the members, but it's really meant to be something for the club historians, a tool for them to preserve our information about casinos. Good idea? Yes, I do. Yes. Okay. We did have one collector who said, by moving the pictures out of the chip guide and into the archive, even though it's one click away, that I ruined his life. So. Oh. <laughs> I consider that a good day. <laughs> So that's the archive. At the return, here we are back at Jay's favorite scene. So I want to show you what one of our administrators did. This is Robert Baker. He runs the slot card guide. I don't know, if any slot card collectors here? Have you seen this before? So what's significant about this, this is uh, a free download. You could, it's a PDF. Uh, you could download it to your computer and it's got 19,400 slot cards. He updates it every three months. You'll get a current version of it and it's slot cards from all around the world. And the thing that he did that makes this document unique is he linked it to the chip guide. So let me show you one of the pages. <coughs> Here are all the states and what page number it is. So if you want to see the slot cards from Kansas, you would go to page 77. But what he did was also, if you click on Kansas, it brings you to the Kansas page on the chip guide. Brings up your browser and you see the Kansas page. Next one. If you go into the individual pages where he lists all of the slot cards, you'll notice that the chip guide number is over in the right hand column. Over here, because all these slot cards are on the chip guide. If you click on the chip guide number, it brings up that pic the pictures of that slot card from the chip guide. So he's made a great facility. He's using the power of the chip guide to make this valuable for collectors. That done with like hyperlinks? Yeah. <coughs> exactly what it is. Okay, so he spends the time to make this document so every one of those CG numbers is a hyperlink. Okay, next. This is the second thing that we did that is new, and this is brand, brand new. Albert hasn't even seen it yet. So I'm gonna sit down again. And <laughs> <laughs> sorry to pick you out and show you this. And let, let me explain what it is first. It seems to me that a lot of people have special interests. People who collect dice, uh, matchbooks, ashtrays, um, certain people only collect illegal chips, and the chip guide has everything. It may be cumbersome for them to find what they're looking for. 
So I made a way to make it easier, if you've got a specialty, to work with just the stuff you want to see. And I don't have a good name for it yet, but it's kind of like a filtered chip guide. So this is just a prototype. It's not live yet. Um, and after you see it, I'll explain what I think we're going to do with it. So, this filter here is how you say what kind of chip guide I want to see. So, let's say ashtrays. <coughs> when I click ashtrays, and then let's just say United States, I only, I only see states that we have ashtrays from. So, I leave out all the ones that we don't have ashtrays from to make it easier, because otherwise you'd be searching every state to find out which casinos. And if I pick, I don't want to pick, well, let's pick Nevada. I think we have about 2,000 casinos listed in Nevada. This is only a small portion of them, because these are the ones that we have ashtrays from. And if I pick the bird cage, then I only see the bird cage ashtrays. So if you're an ashtray collector, it's just ashtrays. Only casinos that have ashtrays, only states that have casinos that have ashtrays. And I started off, I did a few of them, I thought. If you're into slot cards, I called one Baker. If you do this, then what you're gonna see is just um, all the Nevada casinos that we have slot cards from. If I pick, if I pick California Hotel, then I'm going to see all of their slot cards. So how might we use this? There are a lot of people who collect matchbooks, dice, postcards, things like that. Not just casino collectors. So I can make a website that's casinoashtrays.com. And when you go to that page, the whole ship guide is there, but I'm just giving you the ashtrays that we have. And as far as, you know, someone who's not a casino collector, what do they care? They're just going to see stuff they're interested in. And the same thing for dice collectors or whatever. If you're an illegal collector of illegal casinos, I could do, you know, we did one, so you'll only see illegal stuff. So, just developing the idea, I wish I had a nice pretty page, front page, and it would say casino, dice, co you know, <coughs> collections, and you would only see that when you went to that page. So that's what we're thinking about doing with this. And again, all our great ideas come from collectors. So if you've got an idea for something you want to see that you didn't already see up here, let us know. And we'll see if we could accommodate you. So one of them I did was... Yeah. Question about that. Are you going to make it so that the search is savable? So that you would be able to save it and then just return to it without having to go through the filtering steps? The, the three steps? Yeah. Haven't no. thought about that, but we can do that too. We could, you know, we could use things like session variables and cookies and remember who you are right. and get you back to what you want. Yeah, we don't want to ruin his life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, any questions about this stuff? How are we doing on time? Twenty twenty-four. You got plenty of time. Plenty of time. You're doing good. So, we did our demo. Seen something new? Uh, oh, pop quiz time number two. After the United States, which five countries have the most casinos on the chip guide? UK, Russia, Australia. Hold yeah. on, Albert, you've got the chips. No. Where are they? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Who said UK? Right. Who's, somebody said Russia? 
Think is on the list. Germany, Canada, Hong Kong, France, Brazil, France. Did I give that five already? Spain. We said Spain already. No. No. I think they're pretty much all. Yeah, go to the next one. Let's see if we miss one. England, no, Russia. Canada. Oh, who said Canada? Somebody said Canada. All right. So, yes, yeah, so those are the, that's how many casinos we have. And I, th I think the United States is probably around 10,000 by itself. <laughs> okay. So what's, what's the next chart? All right, so now we get to um, where we help you try and figure out um, how to locate chips on the chip guide. Next. So let's say you get this chip. There's a nice pretty chip though. It's got a big pink flamingo on it. And it's the Flamingo Club. How would you figure out if you didn't already know? Anybody know where it's from? Okay. How would you figure out where this was from on the chip guide? I search on one of the first things is don't put in club or casino. You, right, because it's too prevalent there. So if you put in the flamingo, you'll get a much smaller. Okay. So. Let me take those. Oh yeah. The last one. Thank you, Albert. So let, let's see how we do it. Name, Russia. Oh. But before we go there, what information do we have about that we could get from this chip? So, so we have a name, Flamingo Club, we have a denomination, uh, the mold is a chip code, we got a logo, and we've got a color. We could use some of that information to help us find it. Let's see how we do that. Over on the left hand column, there's something called Casino Search. If I click on Casino Search and I enter the words Flamingo, I get. Uh, 42 casinos. And this was Flamingo Club, was it? Yes. Yeah. So we have three Flamingo Clubs. And over in the right column, it shows me what chip molds we use in the casino. Mm -hmm. So if I go to Casino Club and Chip Go, Turkey. it's in Turkey. Oh, wow. And if I click on it, here is the chip on the chip guide. So, <laughs> how much time did it save you going to the chip board, asking a question, having three people telling you how awful you are, and then <laughs> maybe getting the right information? So, what if you just have initials or something like that? What if you just have initials? Good question. What initials? I'm going to chip with the letters A R T on uh huh. A R T. A A Overland Club. Yeah, well, we know that. <laughs> <that's true. laughs> Can you find it? Uh, we have an A R T in a circle. It's a Z one now. That's the one. And it's from Winnemucca. Oh, Is that the one you want to find? Yeah. Wow. Is that wow. the one? Where in your database do you have a comment field you put that in, or what? No. What we actually do is. We allow aliases of casino names. So um, if the name of the chip used in the casino is different from the casino name, then we create an alias of that casino name. Is that one of the brackets were around ART? When you searched on it, I think it had ART in brackets. Well, let's go and take a look at that. Yeah, well, oh, is that just our circle? circle? Yeah. Right. Circle. Okay. Any others? Somebody has a question about it? All right, let's go back to our next one. Oops. <coughs> I didn't continue my left off. 
So here's another flamingo. What do we know about that, Jeff? You've got a name, Casino Flamingo. You look out a denomination, and a mold is the flower mold, a logo, and a color. That's what we know. So let's try and search on the name again, but this time we're looking for the flower mold. Casino Flamingo and Flower Mold. And if we go back to Casino Search, Enter Flamingo. So we got a bunch of casino flamingos, but here's only one that's got the flower on it. Let's try. Come on. I don't know why we're slow. Albert, why did you do my computer? <laughs> I have to blame somebody. Uh, I, I can't get, get off of it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one. No, it's jobs in general. Okay. Wheel um, bikes, what do they call those things? The high roller? It's the one with a big wheel. Oh, yeah. And it's small a small roller. crown. It's a small crown. And it's and a bicycle. Yeah. All right, it finally came up. Here's that chip. So we located the other chip guys. Um, I don't know if we'll be able to find that chip, but let's, let's take a... What's the name of that bike? We've got a few hits. Any small crowns? I don't see small crowns. Yeah, so I don't know if we have it on. Okay. Let's see. Uh, so let's go back and see. I know I had another one. That was a tough one to find. The first two were easy. How about this one? Well, you know, but not everybody looking at this would know that. So what would we do to find that one? What do we know about it? We know it's a horseshoe mode. Um, there's a logo of a star. It's a hot stamp. Green color. Green color. Green brown. So let's let's go back and do a search. Let's just put in star and see what we get. So we get a lot of stars. 169. But we try and put them in parentheses if it's just a picture. Mm -hmm. And it was a horseshoe mold. So denomination in star, horseshoe mold, is from Winnemucca. Mm -hmm. And it's from the star the boiler. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And here's that chip. Mm -hmm. That bicycle was pity party. Uh -huh. From no, I don't know where the <laughs> the style of bicycle is called. The style of bike. Yeah. We probably wouldn't know that. We would just type in bike. Just bike. Okay. Because we're not bicycle connoisseurs, so we wouldn't know what kind that is mm -hmm. unless you told us that when you submitted it. Okay. Uh, but pretty much we would just put in parentheses a bike and any other information that was on that inlay that we would know. Okay. Well, Charles, Charles searched for bicycle. So I might have tried bike going also. randomly choose between bike and bicycles. We always have to search for bike. It's whatever text is in there is going to work. So here's another one. Another one that might be hard to find. What do we know about this, Jeff? Uh -oh. It's got a horseshoe on it, a picture yeah, of a horseshoe. It's a hub mold. Color is black. So I'm going to try showing you a different way to look for things. Uh, that we've done before. So there's something called the Chip Guide Query Facility. And this is filters. When we start out, we're looking at everything on the Chip Guide and using these drop downs, you don't have to type anything in, we could filter out everything but what we want to see. So the first thing is we know it's a hub mode. So if I choose hub mode and chips, and hit query, I find out we've got about 1,500 hub mold chips on the chip guide. That's too many to go through. What color was it? 
And now I'm only looking at black code mode chips, of which there are 113. That's kind of doable. Let's see if we go down. If we see it. Hmm. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't tell me anything, but if I go and click mm -hmm. on the number, chip guide number over here, it tells me it's from the Golden Horseshoe, which is a legal casino in Covington, Kentucky. In that query, could you ser search on inlays and not hot stamps? Um, the problem with inlays is there's just no standardization mm -hmm. to them. So I could do it. That's not really reliable. Right, and if, if we go back to the query facility, I only put in a few <coughs> of the most popular molds. Right. We, 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 I, we currently yeah, have yeah. something over 200 different molds. Yeah. Right, but chip when, I, when I get an odd chip and I find out what the mold is and then I can't search for it in the database because all the molds aren't listed. So I've run into that a couple of times where it's like, oh, the mold isn't listed. It's just, just ask us. Okay. I mean, we started out with what we thought was the most popular. We probably doubled that number based right. on requests. We got another one just on the staff. Okay. Okay. So, um, so this is another good way, using the information that you have about the chip, to kind of find out what you want to look for. Um, it's also fun. Uh, let's say you collect, you know, I'm, I like to collect Caribbean stuff. So I got Caribbean and then oh my, for some reason I'm just low today. And let's say Bahamas. And I want to see all the chips from the Bahamas. I now have a, I've just generated a catalog mm. of Bahamas casino chips awesome. for myself. So I don't want to see those advertising mm -hmm. chips, I just want table chips. Mm -hmm. So all chips include roulettes and everything else. So if I change it to table chips, here are all the table chips from the Bahamas. And if you want to save paper, if you're going to print it out, you can say, let's get a lot on each page. So it shrinks them into small sizes so I can get more on the page. <coughs> and you could do this, you know, for any state, um, any place in the world. If I wanted to do it for Nevada, how big would that be? I mean, oh, how many Ooh. Nevada table chips do you think we have? 10,000 pages. <coughs> you get to select the nomination. 190 pages, mm. almost 10,000. Mm. And if I do all Nevada chips, food roulettes and everything else, 28,000. Wow. And there's something else you may not know. Jay, I want you to close your eyes for a second. You could say you want to see this. It's not a good way to start a sentence. The text version. And you can actually if you see this, it kind of looks like <coughs> the chip rack. It kind of does. <laughs> except, except it doesn't have the DCR numbers in it. It has our numbers in it. They'll still be here. <laughs> <laughs> so if you wanted to create a checklist, you could use this, create a checklist of stuff that you're looking for. Okay. So, um, those are the kinds of things I wanted to show you, but since we've got more time, we could open this up to questions and answers, and if you want to 
uh, figure out how to find another chip on there, if maybe a, an initial chip, we could do that or whatever else we want to cover. Anything else? Yeah. You're talking about you know external links like to Wikipedia or YouTube or whatever it may be. Uh, I've done searches a few times into uh, the uh, research uh, facility that uh, David Schwartz has over at uh, UNLV, and, which is pretty extensive uh, with materials and photographs and stuff. I don't know how complex that would be to try to link his data. Or Easy. Okay. The same way we look linked into YouTube, yeah. and there's no like copyright because we're not copying his information. Right, we're just linking to it and showing his stuff. You know, right. telling you it's his stuff right. without claiming it's, it's the ours. idea that that's a pretty nice uh, right. collection of stuff. Yep, that's a good idea. Are you volunteering? No. <laughs> 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 oh, <come on>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As far as the chip uh, metadata is concerned, are, are these the fields that you have pretty much um, to look up oversized chips or background chips or roulette chips or, or exclude certain types of chips? Do you have the data fields in, in the database? Um, we put most of that stuff that you spoke about in the comments area, right. and we can keyword search on the comments. So we could do it. Well, it's easier, it, it, it's more effective to exclude data than to include data. So if you want to exclude all the map that's something you could do. So maybe... Not maybe, easily. No, maybe you should be about adding more. But I, you know, I, it's a simple matter to add another field if people are really interested. You know, we, we, we answer to you. If, if we hear we that search, people want to, want to uh, be able to identify Baccarat chips, all I need to do, I could do this probably in less than an hour. Add another field to the database mm -hmm. that's Baccarat, yes or no, and then do a search on um, the word Baccarat in comments, mm -hmm. and if it's there, change the yes to the no to a yes for that field. Literally, it'd take me an hour to do that. There's a lot more, obviously, than Macalester's. Right. Preplays and values. Well, you know, you, you, bring up, you bring up a good point. Again, I didn't design the chip guide from the beginning. That was Greg's job. Um, so there are things I would have done differently. One of the things I would have done differently is I would have had one type for chips and then allow subtypes. It's a roulette chip, it's a baccarat chip, it's a pan chip, uh, you know, for all the different types of chips. Right now, each one of those is a different type. We don't have type and subtype. It would have made my life a lot easier to go with type and subtype. It's exactly what I have. I, I use types and subtypes. Right. I said what in chips. So, I teach during the year, in the evenings, I teach college IT courses, and, um, I'm off for the summer, so I have some summer projects to do. That might be one of my summer projects. One of the things we're, uh, I've told the administrators about, we had our breakfast yesterday morning, is um, we've got a problem with the chip guide. There's so much data there, we've exceeded uh, numbers that they, the website people allow us to handle. They tell us, 48 megabytes is the biggest uh, database that we can have and save it and make a copy of it. And that's what we do every night when we take the work that the administrators did today and put it so you can see it. There's actually two chip guides. There's one the administrators work on and there's one that you see. So one, the administrators, we call the development website and then we call the production website the one you see. So every night, we save everything that's on the development and then restore it into the production. So that's, how, that's why there's a nightly update. So that we, we got too big. One day, I think in January, it didn't run. And the following, we exceeded a limit. 
So I, I created a logging system. And with the logging system, every time somebody, one of the administrators does something, an add or change or delete, it logs that transaction. And now that I have a uh, uh, logs of everything that was done, I only have to look at the log and update the production version with the work that was done that day. I don't have to copy the whole thing over. But that allows us to do other things. Sometimes, believe it or not, Albert and his team makes a mistake. So they're going to have an undo button. If they just did something, they changed something and they made a mistake, they could hit undo because I know what it used to look like and what it looks like now, I can undo it. If they did a delete when they should have not done a delete, I can restore that chip back. That's one of my summer projects to get that up and working. Okay. Not that you do that very often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, about, about once a week I get a call from an administrator. I deleted something by mistake. How do I get it back? Yeah, it happens. So, good question, Robert. Anybody else? Questions? Yeah. You're getting so many links in here now and so many different photos. What steps are you taking to ensure that you're not getting any viruses that could be passed out to somebody else? What are you doing for security? <laughs> we have not been attacked. Okay. The Moog website, which has a blog, the blog gets attacked about once a month. And the website people handle that for us. But the chip guide has not been touched. And one of the reasons is the only access to the actual production chip guide that you see is the copies that we make. There's no other way to get into the chip guide. So we've closed all the doors so nobody could come in. Okay. Yeah, the only reason why I ask that is because you have the one video on there. Uh, YouTube is notorious, okay, for viruses and trying to take and spread things around. I was yeah, but about that. It, it can if, if I'm showing, all I have is a link to YouTube. To YouTube. And YouTube okay. is sending the video, and I'm showing that video on our page. Okay. They're not sending us any code that can infect our website. So uh, I feel pretty good about the website is safe. Um, and every once in a while, like for a convention, I download the entire website. It takes a couple of days uh, to my laptop. And I know this is the yeah, next question. I, got. I know this is a beginner's question, and I haven't been on the site for quite a while. Do you have a section in there where it shows all of the different moles and which companies are associated with those? It was a topic of discussion yesterday morning. We're working on standardizing the malls because not everybody calls everything the same name. Right. And we're working on fixing them up. Uh, when, <coughs> when we started, we had, believe it or not, over 800 malls, and we're down to about 200 now. So okay. we're going to further work on that. <coughs> and um, actually, the club above the chip guide is looking to have a standard list of malls. And if that happens, um, we will adopt that. Good. Another good question. Not a beginner question. <laughs> <laughs> well, put it this way. When I'm taking putting in chips into my little, my own little database, mm -hmm. I get this chip and I say, well, gee, is this an inlay or is this a Full scale? Is it a chip code? Is it something else? Or um, I see. And you want to see it right now? There's a, there's a very good website. Uh, Robert Eisenstadt has it, and he's got a mold reference oh, okay. on it. Okay, and that might be what the club adopts as a standard tail. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I did do that for inlays. The administrators can see a list of all the inlays. Uh, what the name is, and then a picture of what it looks like. I think we might want to make that public. I don't, yes. see, I don't see why why you couldn't. What, what education? What, yeah, what would what bad would come of that? So that's not a 
you might have too many people want to be administrators. <laughs> All right. Anybody else questions? Want to look at things? Do you need more administrators? Excuse me? Do you need more administrators? Um, ask the boss. <laughs> <laughs> trying to clean up some old stuff too. So that would really help while we're, you know, searching and doing things. So, yeah, it's, I'll give you an example. You know, most of us started out as chip collectors and most of the administrators are chip collectors. But we have things like uh, slot cards in there. And we weren't familiar with it. It took Bob Baker, who's a slot card expert, to tell us what information we should be storing about slot cards. If you don't collect them, you don't know. Right. So uh, we've got ashtrays on it. We don't have an ashtray expert on staff. We don't have a matchbook expert on staff. So you know, if you've got a particular area you're, you're an expert on, then we watch it. We're fixing roulettes. Roulettes are in there, kind of uh, under one casino, uh, sporadic. Uh, use Nevada because they're more a little older. We have some from the 80s first, then the 60s, and then it could go to the 70s, then back to the 40s. We're just trying to organize all them and get them back in a, into a, a known order so that you're going to look at the oldest ones first down to the newest ones as you scroll down. So I've been working on that. Some days I change 150 to 200 roulettes, trying to update them, go through the chip rack, Find the order in the chip rack and try and set it up that way. So, so uh, let me show you a couple of other things. Yeah. The search results, is, is that attached to Yes. Yes, so, all right. So, Chase, when we were in the query facility and we were looking at. <coughs> Uh, Nevada and chips. At the bottom of the page, hit next page, and you now on page two. So, does that answer your question? It does. Okay. So let's go back to the guide. I'll show you some other things. And I'll touch on things that people ask me all the time. Sometimes people don't want to see these fraternal chips from the Elks, uh, Harley Davidson <laughs> chips. They're, you know, that's not casinos. I don't want to see them. Well, you don't have to see them. See this field over here? It says non casinos. So right now, I say I want to see everything. Show me non casinos. I could say I don't want to see non casinos. They all, and they all disappear. Boom. Mm -hmm. So all I have is you know, Indian casinos, illegal casinos, based, things that are actually casinos in the list. And if I only want to see the not casinos, I can do that too. So now we made all the real casinos go away. And I'm looking at golf clubs and fraternal organizations. Why do we have golf clubs here? Believe it or not, they issue chips. They use them as markers or drink chips or something. And one of the administrators collects them, and so we got them on there. And so not all golf courses. Yeah, chips. Yeah. Not all golf courses. I said just about all. They just about Everyone all. I play at has chips that you can buy and use as well. Okay. Yeah. And here's what they look like. And then uh, let's go to, let's go back. Just mention Harley Davidson for a second. How many Harley Davidson chips do you think we have on the chip side? 
one guy, one administrator, pretty much did them all. How many? Um, I think there's over 10,000. Oh, yeah, oh. so well, let, let's see how many we have. Do we have both probably on there? Yeah, but they're not all Harley Bowles. They're not all Harley Bowles. They're not yeah, all Harley Bowles. It's Ace King, Ace King. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how can I look at just, oh. Well, let's look at all the photos and then search. Well, here's something else I'll show you. Other stuff, uh, stuff, if you go to casino management, where is that? Over here. And. How come I only got this small list? Go back. Go back because Harley's on here. Let's just go back here. If I, I pick one of them. See where it says member of Harley Davidson here? If, if a casino is member of some larger organization, like all the Harris casinos and Boyd casinos or whatever, it'll say it's a member of Boyd Gaming or Caesars or whatever. If you click on that, you're going to see a list of every Harley Davidson casino that we've got. Um, yeah. Worldwide. So, so all that's there. And then you could, if that's what you want to look at, or you want to look at Elks Chips, or is there a member of a big organization? You can do that also. But because everybody is Nevada centric, let's go to what's one of the Boyd casinos? California. 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 Let's hope we have it set up right. Oh, I've got to turn those on in order to see it. Let's go to California. Hotel, member of Boyd Gaming, click on Boyd Gaming. Here's all the Boyd Gaming. <coughs> oh, and it's got all locations. Um, I don't think there's a good way to, to figure that out. They don't have past Boyd Gaming casinos on it. Excuse me? Which one? It doesn't have. Closed white gaming casinos on it. Are they see Sam's Town, Kansas City. Well, is it currently closed? Yeah, so we don't have. If there was chips. Yeah. Need is like all. The We only have one field for the casino, so if it the same casino opened up under a different management. Open, closed, gone. Gone. Oh, is that, so that that's just an oversight then. So you said it was in Sandstown, Kansas City, Missouri. There. So it shows closed, but what when we were looking at the list of voids, it wasn't on the list, so we didn't know how to do it. But now that we know, we could go back and update this. How would we update? You want to see how we update it? So you see it says development up here? That means we're on the development version of the chip guide. If I click on the name, here's all the information that we collect about the casino. And this is what we used to update. Here's the management company. I should have remembered what Boyd's code was. Um, Let's go back to California. Let's just go to Boyd. They're, they're based in here. So it's NVLV B6. NVLV B6. I hit change. And um, if I go back to now. Sam's over here, and I hit refresh, there it is, so now it's on the list. Fixed. Uh, 
in the two canneries. Yeah. Canneries are not on there? Yeah. And it's relative in your I just I just drove it. You know all the volunteers that we get Yeah. You managed to get all the and they bought all the and the two canneries at the same time. Sometimes what we need is that we don't we don't read the um, the official papers that come out. We work off of what you guys send to us. And if you know a better closing date on something or an opening date or if this is now void, we take all that information and we make the updates. Yeah. So it's we can't follow the gaming news and you know to, to the point where we depend on you guys to send us the updates. We have a sailor in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a little old spice. Uh, <laughs> and what was it? It was inside cannery, is the other one? And the other one is the cannery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But in the case of Alianche, wasn't it because they issued separate chips? Separate wood chips? That's just separate. Okay, I don't know. It's really the cannery. So, all right, so that's what all it took for us to update those casinos. Uh, we, have to, we have to do a refresh here. So, you now here's the. Uh, here's the east side cannery. And here's the cannery back here. Okay. So that, that's what that's what the administrators do all the time. But you know, trying to keep up with all this information. The Kansas Star there too. Kansas Star there too. Oh, well, you, you gotta talk to us. Jim Jimmy, send me a, send me an email on that, will you please? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you the other property yeah. that they online. Yeah, I think you send me an email on that. So what do you think the number one question I get about the chip guide is? Where are the prices? <laughs> so you know, we've got like 15,000 casinos on there, 180,000 items on it. It's just, and we've got a staff of 18 people to keep that up to date. We need a staff of another 100 people to keep the prices up to date. That's why we don't have prices. Because, because, what? Is that why? Is that why? Yes, because what we could do, I, I, I don't want to tell people you know, what we think the price is, what I would do is say, I could give you auction results. I could tell you what other th people think the prices are. But yeah, we could do that. But uh, you know, but, and then there's another reason. There are people, there are people like Jay who make a living out of producing price guides. We're not in competition yes. with them. Everyone, I make a living at yeah. producing price guides. <laughs> 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 can you do a Michigan one? I can one do price four please. cents an hour. <laughs> <laughs> can you do a Michigan one, please? Jay, you can make me Nikes and make more than that. Seriously. <laughs> Are we done? Michigan for a while. Are we done? Yeah. We have yeah. anything else? There's a great seminar. Thank you. Yeah. Very